the DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast in every state in the Union present the best of Groucho. Groucho's been on vacation, friends, and he'll be back again next week to begin his new fall season of You Bet Your Life. Tonight, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer brings you another of the best shows from the past, shows that you've told us you'd like to see again. And now, here he is, the one, the only... There must be some mistake. Oh, that's me. Huh? I'm just warming up. <laughs> well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples. Land sakes. If any of them say the secret word, they'll win a hundred bucks. The word denied is sleep. And if they say the secret word, there's duck. This is uh, Julius, the duck. Huh? Isn't he cute? <laughs> this duck will come down and pay him a hundred dollars. He has his own bank account. <laughs> in the uh, Duck of America bank. Huh? <laughs> right. We invited some sales girls to the show tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Brindell Simon. Her partner is a man with an unusual occupation, Captain Jack Sparks. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you do. Uh, Brindell Simon. Well, hello and welcome. Eh? How do you do? It's an odd name, Brindell. It's nice to have you here. Where are you from? Uh, well, I was born in the Bronx, New York, originally. Oh, really? Yes. Captain Jack Sparks, is that, that's you, huh? Eh? Yes, sir. What's the captain for? Are you Captain Video? No, I was a captain of the United States Marine Air Corps. Oh, really? That's right. Is that so? Is it customary for ex-Marines to continue being called captain? I don't think it's exactly customary, but uh, it's kind of stuck with me. Some of the fellows call me Cap, and one thing and another. Mm -hmm. It just kind of stuck with me. So do you wear a cap, or why do they call you? Very so. <laughs> Now, uh, Brindell, uh, uh, Mr. Fenneman says you're a sales girl. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Where do you operate? At Saks in Beverly Hills. Oh, you work in Saks? <laughs> okay, someplace. Huh? You don't happen to know this joke, do you, Brindell? Well, some smart Alex will ask, uh, what kind of Saks do you work in, potato or flour? <laughs> what kind do you work in, Brindell? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know your store very well. I've been there recently. I owe them $380. <laughs> I do. I bought two neckties there not long ago. <laughs> After I got the bill, I tried to hang myself with one of the neckties. <laughs> they have very good hanging neckties. <laughs> what department do you work in, uh, Brindell? I work in the better ready to wear in sportswear. Well, you better wear something. Uh... <laughs> Well, what, is the, what do these dresses cost, these uh, dresses at sex? Uh, we have dresses anywhere from $30 up to $1,000. But why would a woman want to pay $1,000 for a dress? You can buy one for $3, can't you? Well, if she buys a dress for that amount of money, she's usually getting very fine fabric, very high styling, and uh, she's impressing all of her friends, and it... Well, it shows that her husband's doing very well, and... She's, <laughs> she's doing all this. hang himself with one of those neckties. Right? <laughs> well, she's doing this for him. That, you mean that's her story, eh? Yeah? It would be interesting to hear the husband's story on the same thing. Let's, uh, let's get back to you, Cap. Uh, by the way, speaking of styles, uh, that's a kind of an unusual coat you're wearing, isn't it? Are you out formal tonight? No, uh... Or did you have mustard for dinner? <laughs> Are we in Technicolor? No, uh, uh, this jacket's about three times heavier than the one you're wearing. How do you know how much this weighs? I can tell by looking at it. You can? It's kind of thin material. Oh. I didn't mean that then to be a... Uh, well, it isn't. Or well, but you, you certainly uh, proved it, though. <laughs> It isn't thin, it's just shoddy, that's all. <laughs> it's a heavy coat, and I'm kind of gifted to pleurisy. And I have to wear heavy clothes even when I sleep. <laughs> sleep, say, you said sleep. <laughs> you said sleep, that's the secret word. So you and Miss Brindell, uh, Simon, each have uh, garnered yourself 50 bucks. Thank you very much. 
I hope that'll teach you not to ridicule my clothes. <laughs> now, what sort of work do you do, Jack? I'm known as Captain Jack Sparks, the human cannonball. <laughs> You're a human cannonball? That's right. You got the wrong shape for a cannonball. Then. <laughs> well, we've been looking for a man of your caliber for a long time. <laughs> Are, are, you, are you really one of those guys that gets shot out of a cannon? That's right. Where, where do you do your work? Uh, what parks, fairs, circuses? Was there good money in this racket? I get $1,000 every time I get shot. <laughs> well, you can get shot for $1,000, I guess. You can get half shot for 500 I guess. <laughs> How far does this cannon shoot you? Well, at present, uh, from the mouth of the cannon to the net, is 169 feet, mm -hmm. and I generally travel around 750 to 75 feet in the air. And how fast are you going? I imagine around between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Why would any oh. man uh, in his right mind uh, go into this racket? <laughs> well, I've got a little private joke. Uh, I just want to be a big shot, and it's the quickest way I could figure out how to do it. <laughs> Well, that's certainly a private joke, all right. <laughs> you keep it that way, and nobody will shoot you with your own cannon, Jack. <laughs> all right, well, I'd like to continue talking to you two, but uh, how would I like to win some money? How would you get that? How would you like to win some money? Uh, now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $3,000 question. Before you do, I want you to pay close attention to something of great importance. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number five. This is tools of the trade. Here's your first question. How much of the $20 are you going to bet? $19.98. Huh? The lady says $19.98. All right. With what occupation do you associate a mortar and pestle? Well, a, a cement man. No. A mortar. Talk, talk it over. M-O-R-T-A-R. Mortar and pestle. Pharmacist. That's right, pharmacist is right. Are well, you on your way? You have $39.98. Now, how much of this money are you going to try this time? You might be going for $3,000 tonight. All but two cents, she says. All right. Now, who would use a scalpel and a suture? A doctor. A doctor or a surgeon is right, yeah. <laughs> You now have $79.94. All right, here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? All but two cents. All but two cents, all right. Who would use a creel and a reel? Oh, a uh, fisherman. Fisherman is right, eh? You talk it over before you answer. You now have $159.86. And here's your last chance to shoot the other, uh, to beat the other couple, sir. How much will you bet? You have one five nine eight six. The whole thing. The works. Now you're going to shoot the works. All but two cents, she says. All right. <laughs> Who would use a trowel and a hot? Uh, a brick mason. Man yeah, yeah, brick. yeah, 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 yeah. And you'll wind up with $319.70. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Thanks to you. Well, Groucho, we have a housewife for you now, Mrs. Helen Hempel. She was chosen from our studio audience. Her partner is a university professor, so please, folks, would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you do. Mrs. Helen Hempel, eh? Yes, sir. And uh, you're a housewife? Yes, sir. Uh, where are you from, uh, Helen? Uh, from Manhattan. And uh, uh, you, uh, let's see now, Professor, uh, you're a university professor? Mm. Now, uh, what, what do you profess, Professor? Well, I teach uh, geology at UCLA. Well, uh, so you're, you're Professor what? Grant. Grant? What's your first name, uh, Profi, old boy? Ulysses S. Grant IV, and my grandfather was buried in Grant's tomb. Oh.
Well, it's a small world, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Sooner or later, we get everybody up here. <laughs> it's only a question of time. One of these days, we'll get his grandfather, huh? <laughs> He's an integral part of our show, you know. Yes, he is. I've heard that. Yes. I was up to visit the tomb last year in New York. That's fine. I was up to the World Series, and this is right on the way to Yankee Stadium, and I dropped off there. <laughs> yes, I had quite a talk with the caretaker up there. Really, I did. Sure. As a matter of fact, he seemed interested in placing me alongside of your grandfather. Huh? <laughs> do do keep, uh, people kid you about being named uh, useless? Uh, oh, yes. Ulysses has... <laughs> Unless he's Grant. I've been kidded all my life, and I'm so bored with it. I Especially don't, I don't bad now, though, after your program started. I, people want to ask me if I'm buried in Grant's tomb. That's <laughs> <laughs> your fault, Roger. Yes, yes, I guess so. Although I had nothing to do with placing him there. <laughs> I was a great admirer of the general. I think he was quite a Glad fellow. That. <clears throat> Mrs. Hempel, uh, let's get back to you. Most housewives have hobbies. Uh, do you happen to have any? Uh, yes, I have the Common Lombardo Fan Club. That's a hobby? It is. Don't they have a working agreement with the A&P Gypsies, the Common Lombardo? But <laughs> well, what, what do you do uh, specifically for the Common Lombardo fan club? Do you fan them? Uh, no. You we, club uh, them? What? Or do you Lombardo them, huh? <laughs> no, we work for them. We put out a monthly, uh, bi-monthly paper. I see. Has anything unusual ever happened to the president of a fan club? Uh, for example, have you ever had to club any of the members? Uh, no, To but, keep them in uh, line? Once I got caught in a revolving door with Charles Boyer. <laughs> How long did you go around together? <laughs> I guess, oh, I you don't, don't know. You don't often get a chance to use an old joke like that. I don't like know that. how long. I don't know how long it was, but it was most exciting. Was it? Mm-hmm. Well, you couldn't reach him, could you? There's this partition no. between them. Huh? Almost got the sole pulled off my shoe. <laughs> By Boyer? Eh? No, no. He was uh, well, very nice. Did you nice. talk to him? We got him at the end, and he... Uh, Which... <laughs> Has anything else ever happened to you that you'd care to reveal to 40 million people, uh, Helen? Well, there was a time worse than that. When I was in the bank and uh, they opened a, new, a different window, a fellow came back from lunch and I ran up to it, and another man ran up and he was there before I, and I said, you take the place. And he did, he robbed the bank. <laughs> And it turned out to be Charles Boyer. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I've learned quite a lot about General Grant here tonight. Fine, Josh. I'm glad. And uh, it's been nice talking to you, and to you too, Helen. Thank you, Grant. Now, let's see if you can win some money. That's the main thing. You run your 20 bucks no more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the $3,000 question. The human cannonball and the sales girl won $319.70, and the secret word is sleep. You selected plane geometry. Is that that's the kind you do in a plane? Yeah, that's right. Huh? No. Here's your first question. How much are you going to bet? Remember your partners, and you have to talk it over. With Carmen Lombardo. I think. Oh, no, no nineteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. Mm -hmm. Is that all right, Helen? Yeah. All right. What do you call the line from the center of a circle to any point, any point on the circle? What's <laughs> <laughs> a radius? Yes, that's, uh, Radius is right, yes. Radius. We're on the Radius every Wednesday night, have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to get a joke in occasionally. <laughs> you know, I have 30... It was a pip-pip, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, I have $39.99. I'll let you crack a joke once in a while, too, if you can think of something. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Too good, you get fired. <laughs> How much have they got? Thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. How much of this sum are you going to bet? Remember, you're going for three thousand dollars. Thirty-nine dollars and ninety-eight cents. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you call the triangle having two equal sides? Uh, that's an equilateral triangle. No, like isosceles. 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 She's right. Isosceles, huh? <laughs> $79.97. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? $79.97. Mm -hmm. 
96 cents. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you call a six-sided polygon? P-O-L-Y-G-O-N. That's a uh, hexagon. Hexagon is right. I thought a polygon was a bird. <laughs> You now have $159.93. I don't get much money in this show, but I'm certainly getting educated. Save one cent. <laughs> Save one cent. All right, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to bet 15992, right? What do you call an equilateral rectangle? Uh, a cube. Uh, a, a square. A square. Are you insulting me, or is that square. what you call it? Huh? <laughs> a square is right, huh? Wind up with three hundred nineteen dollars eighty-five cents. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealer. Thank you. Well, Groucho, we invited some messenger girls to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Carol Cummings. Her partner is a grandmother, Mrs. Italia Matze. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Say the sacred word and divide $100. Say the sacred word and you divide $100. It's a common word, something you do. Um, Carol Cummings and Mrs. Italia Mazzi. Huh? Mazzi, my name. Mazzi. Huh? Now, which one is the messenger girl? I am. Oh. <laughs> How old are you, Carol? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah, what a lovely age. And uh, what is your hometown? Atchison, Kansas. Atchison, Kansas? That's right. Oh. Where is that near? Topeka? Yes, it is. And how long have you been out here? In California. I've mm. been here a year now. No. Oh. Why did you leave uh, Atchison? Can you tell us that? Well, I uh, left to go to another place. <laughs> That's one of the most baffling answers I've ever heard. Uh, who do you work for? I work for the City Messenger Service. And Mrs. Matze, is that your name? Mr. Matze, my name is Matze. Matze, yeah. Is that anything like Matze? Matze. Matze. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from... Ita uh, what do I call you, Italia? Italia, Matze. Italia, Italia. That's a very pretty name. And uh, where are you from? Uh, from Italy, Calabria. Is that so? How old are you? I'm 74 years old, and I'm strong like a bull. Well, I'm 83 years old, and I'm as weak as a cat. <laughs> Say, we'd make a great team, wouldn't we? Huh? A weak cat and a strong bull. Huh? <laughs> what are you doing in Hollywood? I'm retired in Hollywood. You're retired? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, everybody's retired in Hollywood. <laughs> Everybody, I bet there isn't anybody in that audience that doesn't get Social Security. Mr. Uh, what did you... If, if you ain't got no money, you can't retire. You have to work to make a living. Well, you get uh, old age security, don't you? That's not enough. How much you get? $800 a month. $800 a month? A month. From Social Security? Oh, no. From my profit. <laughs> oh, you're loaded, huh? You got money, eh? <laughs> What are you doing later, kid? Uh, I used to work. Oh, and sure. you saved your money, huh? Well, yes, sir. Oh. Well, what did you retire from? What did you work at? I delivered a baby. For One six, baby and you got $800 I a month? Deliver, I delivered 6,000 babies, uh, 8,000 babies. 8,000 babies you delivered? I'm 50 years. Is that so? Well, you were a lady doctor then, huh? Yes, sir. That's very interesting. 50,000 babies you delivered? No. 8,000 8, babies, babies in 50,000 years, is that it? <laughs> were, you a, were you a lady doctor? Uh, levatrice. Maternity doctor delivered a baby with a diploma. You delivered a baby with a diploma? A diploma. <laughs> Pretty smart kid comes in with a diploma. Oh, no, I have to have a diploma, not a oh, baby. Oh, you had a diploma. Oh, sure. Would you, would you consider this a fairly good career for a woman, delivering it's babies? It's a wonderful or never be depression. <laughs> <laughs> never 
Well, I guess a business like that will always hold up. <laughs> well, Italia, it must be a thrill to look back on a life like yours. Wonderful. Tell me, do you ever hear from any of these 8,000 youngsters? I hear all the time, but I hear more from six, and I hear every week, every day. From six? Why six? They haven't paid their bills, or what is it? Oh, that's my children. I deliver myself. Well, Italia, you win. Pick up the marbles. <laughs> now, there's one more question I want to ask you, Italia. Have you ever thought about going back into business? I never go back into business, but no? in an emergency case, Mr. Mark, you can call me. <laughs> Natalia, if I want any deliveries, I'll just call City Messenger Service. <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but I imagine you'd prefer winning some money. So let's see how well you can do. You run your $20 no more than the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $3,000 question. That's the DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other couples have, but Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. Professor Grant and his partner lead with $319.85. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs by Jimmy McHugh as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Now, talk it over, your partners. How much you well, uh... $19.75. That sounds good to me. $19.75. All right. Uh, give me the title of this song. Sunny side of the street is right. Sunny side of the street lyrics by Dorothy Fields. You now have $39.75. Yeah. <laughs> how much? $39.75. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the sum are you going to bet? Talk it over. All right. What is it? Take a guess if you don't know. Well, it's your sweetheart. And you both are, but unfortunately, you didn't know the answer to that. So I'm going to give you one more question. If you get this right, you'll split $25. Are you ready? Who is buried in Professor Grant's tomb? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Grant. <laughs> Professor Grant is right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got a thrill to be here. Well, I got a thrill having you here, huh? <laughs> and his partner with $319.85. In just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Well, here comes the winning couple, Groucho. Mr. Uh, Professor Grant and his partner all set for the $3,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. All right, here we go for $3,000. So I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help from the audience. For centuries, caravans crossing the Sahara Desert have stopped at a unique trading center in the French Sudan. This celebrated stopping place consists mostly of mud huts with no windows, but its name has become a byword all over the world. For $3,000, I want you to identify this remote yet famous town. Now, talk it over. What's the answer you two have decided on? Take a guess if you don't know. The Casbah? No, no, it's Timbuktu. Oh. 
That's the correct answer. That's a tough question. Yeah. So that means the big question next week will be worth three thousand five hundred dollars. Well, you lost the big money, <laughs> but how much did they win the quiz, George? Well, three hundred nineteen dollars eighty-five cents. Well, congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Don't forget the dealers who sell the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sell the High Style Plymouth. Both great cars, products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in again next week at the same time when Groucho returns from his summer vacation to begin a great new fall series of You Bet Your Life programs. And don't miss Groucho on radio, too. Also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Oh,